This is the I Black Man Podcast. Offensively Black. It's me, it's me, it's M A P. Yo, what up? It's your boy Miles. I'm a dead brower. If you hearing my melodious voice, you know. This is our Black Man Podcast. I think we episode 30. Just recorded and dropped 29 yesterday. And recording and dropping hopefully 30 today. Let's start said timer and we're off. Um, Yeah, it was good. Nothing new with me. Same shit. Just dropped another one. Uh, Wasn't going to do this. Let's talk to the man Kels. Man, aka Tony Stank. And um he talking about he dropped to drop four. So, you know, I'm a busy man, you know, for kids and a wife and all that shit. So I'm not going I'm not going to try to keep up and drop four. I hear even this nigga handsome bane. It's about to drop like three, so I would like to say if given ask me, I am the Rashid Wallace, this team, and I'm if not lighting the fire, stoking the fire that is um sitting precariously under their asses. But not taking credit, just saying steel sharp and steel, and I'm glad to be part of this team. So with that being said, I'm going to at the very least drop two episodes in the shorts. I've been sitting on the short for a minute. I just kept, I forgot I had it. Um, just was iffy about releasing it. Me and wife was buzzed <laughs> when we recorded it. But, you know, they all can't be winners. I'm not saying it's a bad one. Hell, half of the shit y'all hear on here for me is not to my perfect standards of quality. So, we all must make concessions. Anyway, yeah. Um, shout out to my man Kels. Finally, somebody hit the I Black Man podcast hotline. And um, ironically, it was the one paying the bill. <laughs> Feel that girls hit me up. I'm going to probably play that at the end of this episode. I thought about playing at the beginning, but it's like, ah, I'll play it at the end, I guess. You know what I'm saying? But it was really cool just for somebody to have my back. And much love to that, to that man. Because my main thing and my apprehension, which is why I am so... By myself, don't fuck with nobody. Shit, I don't like compromising. You know, I like people to know who the fuck I am, understand what I'm about. Only expect me to act accordingly, cause I am who I am, and I ain't changing that shit more than likely for nobody. You know. But with that said, I, I don't mind working with people along with motherfuckers ain't asking me to step out of my comfort range. And unless you like my wife, when she can make me fucking cartwheel out my comfort range, I ain't moving. But I appreciate, you know, kudos to that man. And it's awkward for me to give props to anybody. You know what I'm saying? But props to that man. I got to give out props because if I'm talking about I want niggas and, and, and we need to help each other and give each other props, I have to give out props if I want to receive props. You know, not to say that I'm doing it for that purpose because y'all know what the fuck I'm talking about. But yeah, you know, for him to be like, he didn't even trip when I was going back and forth and yo, Kale. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't knock you for shit. Even when you was like, oh, I'll let him know. No, no, fuck that shit. I like that. Did you, like, yeah, let me know when motherfuckers is popping shit. I like that. I look at that shit. Looking back, I probably should have chilled out a little bit. You know, I don't regret shit. If I can go back, I'd do almost everything the same way again. Almost. But, you know, for me, yeah, I take Meeks, little micro Meeks. For those who don't know me, I call Meeks losses. After Drake got destroyed by, I'm sorry about the Meek Mills, got destroyed by Drake. It was such an epic loss that I decided from that moment on, losses would be known as Meeks. So that nigga has to, has one hell of a mountain to climb for me to stop calling losses Meeks. I'm sorry. But um, yeah, and I appreciate that. And even, you know, when I had, uh, you know, when he asked me to take this shit down. I like how the nigga came and be like, yo, I got your back. I don't disagree with you. Fuck them niggas. But you got to take that shit out. You know, it, it, it was cool. I didn't mind it. I thought about it. And it's just something I'm, about being the team, 
You know what I'm saying? Like, Wolverine, you can't murk that nigga. He's got it coming. We're on TV. You got to fuck it up for the rest of the Avengers. Ah, damn it, you're right. But, you know, then on top of that, it's like, you know, don't let a stupid nigga trick you into fucking him up. I'll go ham and do all this shit and part his energy and hating on them or trying to destroy them. That's money. That's energy I can put in anything else. You know what I'm saying? Shit. It ain't worth it. So, kudos to Kels for that. I appreciate that. Uh, after listening back to my episode again, I hope no one feels that I was calling anyone out. Well, I mean, I don't care, but I say that because I don't want people to get offended. And I feel like if I say, you know, all my friends is fake except the real ones. The only niggas who would hit me up saying they were offended were niggas who were fake. You know what I'm saying? So it's whatever I don't. And I say a lot of shit that I feel. And I, y'all know motherfuckers understand. But anyway, I played a message. He had my back. It was really cool. Um, let's double check. See where we at with the time right here. Okay. Non-existent. It's cool. I wasn't expecting. But yeah, the thing that uh, made me want to post something. Wife was talking about, you know, being topical. And I want to be topical, not just when I'm beefing or venting and stuff. And I hope you guys appreciate it. I really like that shit. Because I came to some conclusions talking to y'all. You know what I'm saying? It's real, and I appreciate that. And that's why a lot of times I do not have a format. You know what I'm saying? I just go in, and I do what the fuck I do. And I just like, I that shit made its course, and I just came to a realization. It was real ill. And I feel like I had a hand to play in that. I want to thank y'all for that. But anyway, back to the topical shit. A woman lady was yapping about. I guess, uh, what's my man? Dan Gatsby? I guess he was married to B. Smith. Or does she have a real first name? Or was it just B? What kind of name is B? But anyway, for what I'm seeing, man, um, his wife has Alzheimer's. And, you know, she he takes care of her from what I'm understanding. A lot of information I heard from my wife and, you know, the conversations I glanced through some articles. But you can't believe everything now with the fake news. So... I thought about it, and it's just funny, and I see a lot of these women ladies commenting on things having to do with that, and I just find that very curious, because, okay, here's the truth of the situation, and as my wife said, we literally just talked about this five minutes ago. I think the big problem is, well, for me, I don't have a problem with it. I'm just mad at nigga, you make everything, you get there, and you get your white broad, whom I'm sure as soon as your wife passes, you're going to marry this bitch. And this hoe is going to inherit all your wife's hard work. You know, I'm mad about that shit. But if you're just fucking that bitch, then yeah, and, you know, smut that bitch out. That's what I would do. Like, you know, because it's understandable. I mean, if you get to the point and you're taking care of your woman and y'all been together for almost 30 years. You know what I'm saying? And your wife is at the point where she doesn't remember you. She doesn't know who you are. It's never going to come like, yeah, my nigga, my, she had all time. If it was a good 10 years, that shit was gone. It, that don't happen. It only gets worse. It's just be logical. You know what I'm saying? Let's put on a, a big boy pants and a big girl panties. For all y'all hoes are going to be on some sexist shit and be like, why the boys got the pants and the girls got the pants? It was the Seinfeld reference, okay, for the motherfuckers who didn't get that shit. Are you wearing the panties your mom laid out for you? Niggas don't get it. You hear, you hear this shit, Bane? You hear this shit? Anyway, but yeah, you know, let's be real about this now. As far as men, women are sexual creatures, men are sexual, you know, whatever. But from what I understand, I'm a man, I had to have this conversation with my woman a lot. For more and more with men, sex is a need. I'm not going to say never with women. I hear a lot of women who are on that shit, but there's never been a woman I was with. But, yeah, let's keep it real. This nigga has needs. Now... Of course, if he was to be on some value, I'm just going to stay with her and go without and just live my life horribly and take care of my woman because I love her. That'd be cool. But all y'all know, and half of you women ladies know, if it was the reverse and she got her a young little nigga while she was taking care of her man, y'all all would be like, yes, girl, yes, get your life, girl, yes. Y'all be all on that stupid shit. You know what I'm saying? But... Because y'all would assume at some level, where, you know, he came through and the guy's a good guy and this and that. But because this nigga's doing this shit, he's a dog. 
Now, what you want him to do? Push himself up on his wife who's suffering from Alzheimer's? We made promises and have commitments. I know your obligations. I don't know you. Take it. You know what I'm saying? So, he, he tried to be a gentleman about that shit. Get him a chick on the side. Now, okay, the people who get mad and complain, I'll give it to you. Yeah, he could have kept a secret. He could have kept a super duper duper on the DL. And nobody knew. True. But... In this age of technology and social media and social networking, hey shit, fucking secret. Nothing secret. It's only a matter of time before it comes out. You know what I'm saying? From leaked trunk documents to my nigga Sam's third nipple. It all comes out in time. <laughs> Mark, Mark Wahlberg reference. Oh, I'm too good for you guys. Yeah, it all comes out in time. So how would it have looked? Nigga, you got a bitch on the side. This white hoe on the side. You trying to hide this bitch. Oh, you think you slick, nigga. Fuck it. My mom used to tell me, if it's any bad news, gotta be told. If I gotta hear it, I better hear it from you. Because, shoot, if you're going to say bad news, it's bad no matter who it's coming from. It's going to be better coming from you, and it's still going to be bad. Get ahead of that shit. Bet. Same thing I tell my daughter. Anytime somebody going to be saying something about you, you come and tell me first so y'all don't hear it from somebody else. So yeah, he got ahead of that and put his put his cell phone blast so nobody couldn't have the power to extort him, I'm assuming, or anything. For that, I respect it. You in the catch-22, you can't win for losing. Even if the nigga just said, I'm going to get prostitutes. They would still, you know, fault the nigga for that. Trying to get stick wet. You ain't wrong with that. He's still honoring his commitment to his wife. Now, I'm more mad about the whole white woman shit because let's just keep it real, y'all. I'm not knocking, you know, because he's with a white woman. Even though I would prefer, you know, you get it in it and finish it through with a black woman. But that's fine. I'm not knocking that because I don't know. He could just be hanging out. But here's my thing. How many of y'all want to bet that white woman isn't planning to fucking come up? Because, nigga, she's not suffering nothing. Nobody not looking at her and hating on her probably for fucking with a dude with a wife. They probably looking at her. She great. Oh, look at her. She's so nice. She taking care of him and blah, blah, blah. Yakety smackety. Yeah. I just thought it was funny, you know. A lot of the women who were replying and talking about that shit. You know what I'm saying? It was all in their feelings. And this talking about, you know, discretion is key. And she, she she would be embarrassed. And I'm pretty sure she is, but she doesn't know where the fuck she is. Or who she is. I don't know. So seriously, and all the people I wonder, and I want y'all to say something. Let me know. Hit me up. What would be the accurate way of doing that? Because a man's got some needs. And I'm going to bring this to the second part of my conversation. Not excusing it, but it's talking about cheating, okay? Now, a lot of times women, and I was just thinking about this because I tell y'all, my wife, she take care of me. She gets me right, okay? Even with that, and I can't tell her because I'm not saying I'm just divulging no shit. She might hear this. I doubt she listens to my podcast. But I'm going to keep it real with y'all. How men look at the world pre-getting some and after getting some. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to remember, like, my man, the great Patrice O'Neill, God rest his soul, said men working with women, or I'm going to say just men being around. We're going to talk about working, you know, being around, working around women. It's like bear or being around salmon coated in honey. And it's like to the bear, and you know, to the bear, it's like, damn, nigga, shit. You know, normally, dog, if I saw you in the wild, I would just rip your fucking, f- oh, and that honey, mm, that's just, but I ain't I'm just going to sit here and watch you walk past. Mm, mm, mm. Ooh, that's salmon dipped in honey. Jesus Christ. I don't even want to eat the salmon. I just want to just know when that motherfucker is out there is enough for me. Ooh, Lord. You know, and a lot of times your man out there, women, your man is being tempted out there. You know, even if you find, and I'm sure all women are thinking they find, but even if you just know you's a bad ass on some, what, Jill Scott ass, Candace Play ass, Generic fine woman shit. It's a broad finer than you who will do more than you. Or it's a chick not as fine as you who will do more than you. You know what I'm saying? And niggas too. So yeah, and it's like a lot of time chicks get mad. And it's like I hear a lot of women. You know, my wife talked to me about that. Y'all niggas be greedy. I'm like, we we greedy how? How so? You know, because your girl do this and that for you, blah, blah, blah. But you still go and do this and that and creep. And I'm like, dang, you got a point. Hmm. I wonder what that is. So, you know, I think and I, you know, look into it and like a lot of things of it is. 
Like, okay, I realize it. I'm divulge into a little personal shit. I get to the end with my wife, you know, but it's nowhere near the consistency and frequency that I would like it to be. And not even to say I don't get it on the normal. You know what I'm saying? But for a lot of times for dudes, it's like you want it when you want it. That's the fun part. But come here, let me, you know, like that shit. You know, and a lot of times when you're in a relationship in long term, it's just whack sometimes. Because, you know, you just can't be like, I was just thinking, you know, the game come on at nine. And I was thinking, you know, you think you sometime between like six and eight, you could like give me some head. Then you feel bad because she be like, oh, no. Now you mad. She know you wanted some head and she said no. And it's that awkwardness. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever you asking for. You could be like, hey, just sit on my face. So let me buy play Xbox. She'd be like, nah, it's nasty. You know, whatever. And a lot of times dudes just get tired of dealing with that shit. And a lot of times, you know, people get complacent. The girls to put it on you, where whatever you like. Put it, you know, whatever she did that you made you happy, little freaky shit. Once y'all been together, had a couple kids. She don't do that shit no more. In all fairness, that nigga used to take you out and wind you and dine you. He don't do that shit no more neither. People get complacent. Now with men, you get a side chick. It's kind of like a new relationship, which it is. They do all that shit because it's like a lot of time why niggas watch porn. It's not about the fact that the girl does that shit. Because if you pay enough money, nigga, you could make a bitch uh, suck a bowling ball through a garden hose. It's not that. The thing is that you want her to like doing that shit. That's that's the shit that may get niggas off. It's not the fact that you do it. It's the fact, nigga, she did that shit and she loves that shit. Nigga, can you believe it? That's the shit that makes niggas be like, oh, nigga, what, 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 what the fuck, dog? Your wife, you, uh, nigga, this uh, bitch, this bitch did this and that and blah, blah, blah. And part of a friend did. That's the shit. Niggas is visual. We visual, you know what I'm saying? Like, just how women is mental and stuff. And a lot of that junk, why niggas cheat. And it's like women don't think about that. Niggas get tired of, you know. But it's, it's, it's what happens. And I understand that. And not to say that women is all your fault, because it's not. Just explaining that shit. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times, like, I remember uh, my cousin was telling me his homie was talking about this shit. That was interesting. His girl got mad. She found out nigga was watching some porn. She was in the next room. She like, damn, why you watching porn? I'm in here. You good to come? He said, I'm going to be real with you, dude. I wanted some, but I didn't feel like doing all that fucking work. What I wanted to do, he said, if I would have did you, if fucked you the way I felt, like it would have been disrespectful and you would have been mad. I would have came in and just grabbed your legs, pulled your pants off, and just been gone. I wasn't even trying to be like, oh, I want to please you. I'm not. I'm just trying to get my nut off. Quickly. You know, and she got mad. Like, mm. you know, but the fact that it's funny a lot of times when you hear shit like that, women get angry. And it's funny. Like, one time I asked this chick, I was like, uh, you know, it's funny. They talk about double standards and stuff, but they never think of shit like this. Like, all right, we're men. I'm expected to know how to get off any woman I fuck. You expect me to know what makes you tick or to find out what gets you off. Now, think about that shit. Makes it, it seems normal, right? Now, let's flip it. You don't know random female listener how to get every nigga off and then if a nigga didn't come while banging you he can't shame you you can shame me though and it's funny cause like dudes dog you can give a dude a chick who you don't like and you can be like oh, she got a nice hair maybe one thing hell you don't like nothing about her it's a drought I'm playing for points at this, at this, at this point you know how to get yourself off with an ugly chick in a snowstorm in the middle of the day in broad daylight. You know where to take your mind and what to think about to make that shit work. Nigga, if you got a bang Beyonce at a family cookout in the bathroom where everybody in the hallway waiting, you can mentally take yourself somewhere and finish that shit. And it's funny that if you don't, you know, and it's like I was telling the chick, I said, she's like, I don't get it. I was like, nigga, how am I responsible for getting you off? I can get off. I just need you to let me do what I do. But, you know, and maybe I'm sure a lot of people are going to argue that down. And I get it. 
you know, like me, I, you know, I learned my wife. But I spent most of my teens learning women in general. So <laughs> let's check the time. Watch this bitch be like six minutes. Okay, I'm making decent time, making decent time, time, time. But yeah, you know, and I just think a lot of times, women, ladies, y'all need to actually talk to some men. Because I see a lot of this, y'all here, you have women defining what makes a man. And okay, and I admit, you know, point a finger, point, you got what, three, four pointed back at you. Shame on us for trying to say or dictate what makes a woman. So, you know, I give and take. That's fair. But yeah, y'all don't know what it's like. You know, I forgot they said men. Um, let me see. Hold on a second. Let me uh, Google this. Because I'll be talking about this point, you know, a lot. But I never uh, get the exact approximation. And I got this the point. Having this fucking hyphen podcast group money. You can Google shit. How much do men think? about sex there you go conventional wisdom holds that men think about sex every seven seconds while women think about sex rarely or perhaps not at all i believe that shit i believe that shit so you gotta think and even if that's true let's round that mug up to say 20 seconds or better yet every four minutes we think of sex every four minutes I'm sure women don't a lot. I mean, they do, but it's different. You can get it from anybody, you know. And I guess dudes could too, but, yeah, you know. But, yeah, and I say that to say, just talk to men. Ask men. And I'm pretty sure a lot of us can't articulate and put out their ideas and thoughts and feelings as eloquently as I do. But, you know, learn from men. Like, I had to learn from women about women, and I learned from myself from a woman, so that's some big contradictory shit. Yeah, it's just me riffing, trying to be top of cat. So, I don't know. I think I'm going to end it right here, because I think I'm just going over and talking for the sake of talking, and I do want to talk, and I would love to stress this shit to 30 minutes, and I don't know. I think I can. I think I could. Fuck it, let's try it, damn it. Alright, um, hmm. What to talk about? Sad. Spending this good, uh, hyphen podcast group money in this damn studio just to you thinking of what the fuck to talk about. Anyway, again, hyphen podcast, hyphen podcast group has a Patreon page. I'm going to run an ad for it. Please send the money there. So we can um, have nice things. I think I deserve nice things. I can get, uh, you know, merch. So, no, I don't know. I don't, I don't really want to get merch. I want the realest shit. I just want, like, a stencil to send random people with spray paint and just spray paint my shit randomly across America. Like, we're the resistance. But, yeah, man. Uh, y'all see the uh, new trailer for... Well, that wasn't a trailer. It was more of a teaser for that fucking... Um... Man, I'm dialing this shit in. Fuck it. I'm not even about to do y'all like this, man. Hell no. Nah. All right, let me see. All right, let's see. My people deserve better than this. You know what I'm saying? It's damn, only a damn minute went by damn minute. Okay, check it out. The number for the I Black Man podcast hotline. 724 724-313-4519. 724-313-4519. Nine, call it. Leave a voicemail. Put it on the show. Respond to what you're saying. If you want to leave a text message, you can call and do that. Let me know what you're saying. How you feeling? Where you at? Where you're repping? We we'll throw it in there. You know what I'm saying? As always, E Y E B L A C K M A N P O D C A S T at Gmail dot com. I is in your eye on your face. Black Man Podcast at gmail.com. I Black Man E Y E on Instagram. I with the letter I on Facebook and YouTube. Um podcasts pretty much everywhere. Well if you're listening to me, you should know that by now. And um that's about it. Guess I'll just re- finish this up. Hope you guys appreciate this and me putting this out and trying to be topical. And I hope I didn't offend too many people and if I did fuck you that's me 
I just felt like I said that just to be offensive. Which I don't mind, but yeah, if I'm offending people, you know, I want to offend them for the right reasons. Not for that, so no. Nah, I didn't I didn't really intend to offend anybody on this episode. A lot of times I say shit to offend people, but I don't. You know. But yeah, that's about it. Um, mouth this bitch. Be slow to speak, quick to listen. After you hear my baby girl asking y'all to like and or subscribe. I guess I will play my man Kels. And our Black Man Podcast. I am your boy Miles. I'm a dash pro. Be slow to speak. Quick to listen. God damn it, I forgot to do a break for the ads. Fuck it. Thanks for listening, and please download and subscribe so Daddy can stop being a Catholic slave. Hey, yo, Max. So, almost got done listening to the new episode. Uh, I was waiting for you to drop the phone number, and I'm getting ready to go to work, so this is just waiting for me to do it. But, yeah, man, let me just say that you handled old dude like a pro. Um, I felt bad because I felt like I instigated everything by tagging you in. And then it, it kind of spiraled from there with the, the comments and then you get into the point of posting the picture. I wasn't mad at you posting the picture. Fuck it. If we didn't have kids and families, I'd be like, nigga, we rotten. I mean, shit. Trust me. I'm a nice guy, but I ride for mine. Okay? But, yo, I, I, I knew you were mad when I asked you to take it down. Uh... Yeah, I, as I heard on the podcast, there's other people that mentioned it, and uh, Evie had mentioned it too. But, dude, don't ever change, man. I, I promise. I, I wasn't mad at the situation. It was more of a thing where once he started coming at the group, I didn't want that negativity because – and that was the negativity that you started it all. But I didn't want that negativity coming to us, thinking that, oh, well, these, these niggas over here are trying to come at – come at all our heads because I had a question about what the name of the podcast was. But, like I said, it was a learning experience for that dude. Like, he, he was like, why are you going to name it uh, the Black Man Podcast? So what, what are we trying to promote? Like, look at the description. It's not Black Men should be killing everybody in the world and own it. So you might think that. But it is your views, it is your thoughts, and you are a Black Man living in the D. So the name is perfect. Don't ever change. I appreciate how you handled the whole situation. You were not wrong in any aspect. And like I said, it was just because if that dude started posting our family pictures, then we would have really had a problem. And uh, he knows better now. So I think next time that he decides he wants to promote this, oh, peace and racial harmony shit, when he's not really about it, then the truth will come out. But, uh, well, yeah, the truth will come out as in he will uh, think twice before uh, stepping into that realm again. But you handled it like a pro, man. I'm proud to have you hyphen podcast group, as always. And, yeah, this has been Tony Stank. Keep it up, man. I'll turn this thing off.